Hi, I'm David Roman Astro, and welcome to my channel. Today I'm continuing my little series here on mastering Nina, which is really just me going through and configuring Nina for my new telescope. <clears throat> you may notice that we're in Nighttime Imaging and Astronomy version 3.0. We're in Release Candidate 1, so we're getting pretty close to them launching it, which is fantastic. If I haven't mentioned it before, uh, if you're going to be using Nina, you probably should go out there and provide some financial support to the developers. They put an awful lot of time into this application, and they've made it what it is, and they've been very, very responsive to the end users of this application, and so I gladly and willingly help to support them. So. Today we're going to talk about the equipment tab. We've done as much configuration as we can do at this particular point in time without any kind of equipment. So now it's time to basically go in and select our equipment. And you notice here when you click on the equipment tab, you got all these sub tabs here. So we've got the camera sub tab where we're going and we configure our main astrophotography camera. We got a filter wheel here where we go in and configure the filter wheel and the focuser tab and a rotator and a mount and a guider which in my case is going to be PHD2, a switch, a flat panel, weather, dome, and safety monitor. Now because of certain constraints that I have, namely that it's been cloudy as all get out for the past couple weeks and I haven't really been able to do anything, all that I'm going to show you today is me connecting my camera and my filter wheel and my focuser and my rotator and my mount, the switch, and the weather. Uh, I can't do the flap. I can't do the guider just yet because I need to set up PHD2. It's not set up yet. So what you get here in your basic equipment screen, like I say, is all these different pieces of equipment. Now, once you have everything configured and set up, uh, next time you launch Nina and you launch into the profile, instead of going to each individual device and turning it on, you just come down here to this button and this button here will automatically connect everything. And right now nothing's connected so it says disconnect. Yeah, I'm going to disconnect everything because nothing's there. Even if I connect, there's nothing to connect to. But this is the button that you can go in and you can connect and disconnect globally instead of going through each particular piece individually. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select my camera. But before I do that, let me kind of explain these three buttons over here because these three buttons are the same for any device that's on that list. The first one here is that if there is a way to configure it outside of Nina, then by clicking on this, you'll be able to either pop up a dialog box. It might be an ASCOM driver box where you can configure the ASCOM driver. Or in the case of Pegasus Astro, you can select which uh, rotator and you select which power box and which Pegasus uh, Astro uh, Uranus Metro Station. Uh, the first time that you attach to those devices, you have to go through there and you have to select them. And this button allows you to be able to do that. And again, uh, for like the focuser, uh, which has an ASCOM driver, you click on that and that pops up. Same thing with weather. You go into the weather and you click on that and you're able to set up for your city and um, pull down the configuration files that are needed based on what weather service you have set up. So the second button here is to scan for devices. If for some reason you click on here and your camera is not showing up, you can go ahead and rescan and see if whether or not the camera shows back up. And then this right here connects your device. So let's go ahead and select the camera and let's go ahead and let's connect to it. Okay. 
So here's the camera, and this is going to be at least true for CWO cameras. I can't speak for any others. Um, while I can speak for the Augma cameras, they also have configurations down here in the settings. Uh, but basically, here's your basic camera info as told to Nina from the camera, from the native driver. And I can see two things that I want to change right off. One is my gain setting, and one is my offset. I generally tend to run this camera in a gain of 100. That tends to be the gain, um, which gives me the highest dynamic range, but the lowest read noise. Now, a lot of people argue with me that if I'm shooting color filters or uh, narrow band filters that I should use different gain settings, but I find that I get decent results just by leaving this thing alone. And I'm kind of a simple person in that I try not to make things too complicated. And so for me, gain of 100, default of 20. Now the default I will, once I get good skies and I'm able to actually do some first light stuff, I'll go in and I will probably tweak my default offset, uh, but I'll send it to 20 for right now, sight unseen. You probably have, or if you haven't, you should go out and see Quiv the Lazy Geek. He has a video on how to help determine what your offset should be for your particular camera. And then the other thing I'll do is I'm going to give this thing a device name. So I'm going to call it my 2600. And this is my old one. I have a new one and I have an old one. So I'm just going to call this um, ASI. There we go. So this is my old camera and my new one ends with an N. And you can see here, you name up to eight ASCII characters. Okay, so that's what I can do here in my settings. And then we've got uh, temperature control here. Uh, I have a dew heater that comes with my camera so I can turn it on if I so wish. I don't have dew problems here in Phoenix, Arizona, so I leave it off. And then here I can turn on my cooler. Um, and if my cooler's been on and I want to warm the camera up, I can put how many minutes I want it to take to warm up and then click this button and it will basically gradually back off the cooling based upon the number of minutes that I put in. And that's pretty much the camera setting. Next comes the filter wheel. And in this particular case, we're going to go ahead and pick the EWF. And I'm going to click. There we go. And you see here that we've got slot one, slot two. These are rather uninteresting names. I'd like to be able to actually tell, um, tell Nina what's actually in those. So if I come down here to options and go to the equipment tab and here I can go and change what's in them. I use letters, just a single letter. R. Some people actually type in loom and red and green and blue, but I try to make things as easy as possible. I use LRGB and, and HOS and all of my scripts in um, PixInsight. So I just carry that same logic over. Like I said before, I'm rather simple. Uh, so there we go. So now if we go back over here to the equipment tab, you'll notice that all the names now show up. Now down here below are two things, uh, settings. Uh, one is for unidirectional, it can be off or on. I leave mine on. I find that if I don't, when I go to calibrate and then I, I go to calibrate my images and I stack them, I find that sometimes there's a little bit of a shadow on, on sections where there's dust spots and there's like ring shadows. Those are caused because the filters aren't quite exactly in the same place. And if the dust spots are on the filters, then it kind of creates an embossed appearance. 
and so by turning unidirectional on it pretty much ensures for the most part that it's always going to end up in the same spot uh, if you turn off unidirectional then the filter wheel goes in reverse and forward and I know on the older filter wheel I've got a new one I haven't tried it out yet but on the older filter wheel um, you do get that embossed if you don't set it up for unidirectional. And then there's a calibrate button here if you need to calibrate your filter wheel. Uh, when I was having the issue of the embossed dust spot, I calibrated and it didn't seem to resolve anything, so I had to go into the ASCOM driver and turn on unidirectional. Uni meaning one, so it just goes one direction. Straightforward. And up here, uh, if you so choose, you can change what filter is in the filter wheel that the camera will shoot through. In this case, it's defaulted to my luminance filter. Focuser, again, it's the same thing. Just I'm going to pick my ZW01 focuser. I can hit this guy right here, and the little driver setup pops up. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn that puppy on, and there we are. And the other thing that I forgot to mention on the other two is when you connect successfully, you'll get a little box down here telling you that you connected successfully. So here in the focuser, and I can only speak for ZWO focusers because that's all that I have, uh, you basically have a little indicator here if the focuser is moving. Uh, you also get an indicator if it's in settling. And again, you, you configure all that um, in the options autofocus here. Uh, I think you can, yeah, focus or settle time. So you can have the focuser have a particular amount of seconds for settle time. And if it's moving, um, you notice here that I've got an autofocus step size of 50. So when we come here to the autofocuser, yeah, these guys right down here, these buttons right here. So based on that autofocus size, which right now is defaulted to 50, if I was to click on this, it will move the focuser in by five times the autofocus step size. So the step size is 50, so it will move it 250 steps in. If I hit this button over here, it will move it 250 steps out. So if you have um, a step size of 100, let's say, then it's going to move it 500 out, 500 in. And then the smaller buttons here, it's half that step size. So mine is set for 50, so this will move it 25 in. 25 out and again if you have your set for 100 it's going to be 50 in or 50 out just depends on how you got it set up okay for the rotator here i i'm going to pick a rotator and i'm going to pick the pegasus astro and i'm going to click here because on the pegasus astro stuff i have to select the focuser or the, in this case the the rotator and the switch for the first time and so I select it and now I can connect to it and there we go we're now connected to it one little hint for those of you who are new to Pegasus Astro Falcon rotators I keep my reverse switch off because what I found is that if I have it on um, it hunts and seeks. It never is able to get. I let it run one night for about 30 attempts to find the right angle. By turning the reverse off, I was able to find the right angle in three tries. And of course, based upon what kind of rotator you got, in this case, I've got the uh, Pegasus Astro Falcon, I can change um, what my mechanical range is. I just leave it to full. And I can change um, if I wanted to go 180 degrees. I could select that and then hit move mechanical position. Pretty straightforward. The mount, in this case, my mount is going to be my Los Mandy G11, which is the Gemini 
and I've already got it turned on. Here's the Gemini configuration. Uh, for those of you who have never seen Gemini config, but here it is from my mount. And I'm just going to go ahead and connect to it. And there we go. Telescope successfully connected. So anyways, the next thing I'm going to do is connect my switch. So I got Pegasus Astro Advanced. And I'm going to select it. And here we are. Power Box Advanced. And then I'm going to hit Connect. OK. And then Weather. I have set up here in my Options Equipment. I've got my Open Weather Map API key. So I'm going to go ahead and go into Open Weather and then come here and um, I've already got in here Phoenix and I'm going to check and I'm going to select this one because that's what I am 112 33.27 click OK and then I can go ahead and I can hit connect and there we go you can see my cloud cover is 75 percent and yeah so that's it so that's my devices all hooked up now they're all hooked up and attached to this profile so I can come down here and say connect all devices I'm going to say yes so now it's just going to go ahead and reconnect to everything and you can see it all here all the devices that I had set up they're all connected now okay now I can also hit disconnect and this will disconnect everything so I can just hit disconnect now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to exit out of Nina and then I'm going to relaunch Nina so right now Nina is not connecting to anything <laughs> now here I got my two profiles. I got my color profile and my mono. All my devices right now are connected to my mono. So I'm going to go ahead and hit load profile. And there we are. So if I come down here to this button right here and click it, it says connect all devices and it remembers all the devices that I had hooked up and it connected to with all their configuration parameters. That's why profiles are really important in Nina. And there we go. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope some of this made some sense to you. Um, again, I, I can't show you like setting up the focuser or the guider because I need clear sky so I can configure everything and get everything set up. But I think you can see enough of how this operates, at least on the equipment side and how you can go in and change some of the configurations or some of the settings like here on the camera and the filter wheel you can go in and you can define what your filter names are which makes it really kind of nice so anyways if you have any questions put them down below i'll do the best that i can do to answer them please i am no expert in nina uh, again this is how i use nina this is how i understand nina and your mileage may very. So if you like this video, go ahead and click the like button. And if you feel so moved, go ahead and subscribe. And until next time, clear skies and happy guiding.